morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Salty Sweet Games, where we shenanigans up and smooch our way through tabletop role-playing games. I'm one of your hosts, Salty. And I'm Sweet. And these various assorted spices are our friends. Welcome to Masks of Nyarlathotep, our long-running pulp action meets eldritch horror campaign. I have a new necklace of the crawling chaos. Sexy. There's something very... That's very great. Very, very, very good about it. <laughs> um, other fun things um, about me. I just finished watching Fantasy High for the first time. Um, so... Uh, for them... What else? Nothing much. Uh, <laughs> before we go around and meet everyone and their characters, we have some channel shoutouts. Firstly, a ton of thanks to our sponsors, starting with Roll20, a virtual tabletop of choice, <sighs> which unites gamers across any distance with easy to use tools that run straight from your web browser for free. We are part of their Spotlight program, Quiet Phone. It's not called Spotlight anymore. It's called Ambassador Lauren. Gah! We're part of their ambassador program, which highlights indie tabletop creators all across the interwebs. And that's right. Spelljammer comes out next week. Uh, worked on the conversion of that very, very pretty, pretty stuff. Um, thank you, Hawk, for those tips. I do not accept re-rolls, so I will just hand it over to someone else. Sometimes I wish I had them, but long ago I decided, no. <laughs> uh, Allie's one, Kiana's two, Summer's three, Tommy's four, but I do appreciate your support of my Yeah, stop evil. encouraging her. Roll 20 already loves me Allie now. gets an extra one. That's nice. That's like giving me an extra one. In in a way, because Ganymede makes choices. Uh, also, <laughs> thank you to our other sponsors, Dice Envy and Grinding Coffee Co. If you like your shiny math rocks, if you like your soaked bean energy juice as much as I do. These are two great companies to purchase from. We have affiliate links and discount codes you can check out below. Thank you to everybody who has subbed, resubbed, gifted subs, followed, chatted, lurked, liked, and commented on YouTube. We super appreciate it. If you would like to support us further, as Hawk just did very generously, there are tip incentives listed down below that can seriously impact the game using bits or our Streamlabs tip jar. You just click on the panel image, affect the game, or use exclamation tip. It'll take you right there. It's always appreciated, but never expected. Last thing, we here at Salty Sweet Games use safety tools, lines, veils, X, N, and O cards, stars and wishes, and content warnings. Because while the characters may be put through hell, or like get possessed, like super cash by an eldritch god, uh, the players are here to have fun and they are our priority always. So without further ado, I feel like we should meet them. Let's start with Kiana. I feel like I should be not surprised at this point. And yet somehow, it's me. <laughs> it is. First, always. Yes. Um, yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Kiana. I'm the sweetest channel. My pronouns are she and they. But today, I am playing Irene Blackwell, whose pronouns are she and her. Um, her boyfriend got possessed. Mm -hmm. Um, she helped her boyfriend get not possessed. Mm -hmm. Everyone having to deal with the, the, the aftermath of the possession. Mm. Um, and also she still doesn't have her mouth back. Irene has no mouth, everybody. So, you know, everything's fine and chill. <laughs> Good. Great. Good. Speaking of fine and chill, Allison. Hey, everybody. It's Allie. I play Ganymede Graves, adventure scientist, once the archetypical blah, blah, blah. You know that you know the spiel. She's crazy. No, that's sorry. Um, she is uh, likely to get herself in a lot of trouble. How's that? Um, I mean, I don't even I don't even know what else to say today. I, I'm I am not afraid. I am not afraid. How about that? 
I didn't tell you to be afraid. I mean, it was implied. I did imply that you should be afraid. Yeah. Yeah, but... But I'm... I'm... Great. Uh, and let's go down to someone who's never afraid, has never been afraid a day in her damn life. Summer. Hi, it's me. I'm never afraid of anything because there's no reason for me to be as we've seen. As we've seen. If I had, if I had something to be afraid of, then I'd be afraid, but I just have nothing. I have nothing but confidence. Hi. Um, Hi. I'm Summer. I use she, her pronouns. And today I'll be playing one Mr. Charlie Rapp who uses he, him pronouns. And I am the aforementioned boyfriend who got possessed. Uh, mm. And I'm feeling fine. <sighs> Wasn't even traumatizing even slightly. Just kidding. It was really traumatizing. <laughs> that's, good. that's good. That's good. I ask for so little. Yeah. The least I can do. If I'm not going to be, if out of character, I'm not going to be afraid. Yes. The least I can do is be traumatized in character. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful. Someone now let's go to someone who has never disappointed me ever. Tommy. Are you sure about that? That's a are you sure? <laughs> uh as far as men go. Oh, okay, good, cool, awesome. Um uh just just to give everyone a little aware. Literally about a second before we went live, Lauren turns and looks at all of us and just in this happiest voice just says, remember y'all, I'm trying to kill you. And that's why we were all a bit like, hmm, <laughs> at the beginning. Um, and like, really, really trying to kill, like considering you tried to have, you tried to have one of our members tell, like have another member kill me specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was pretty targeted. <laughs> I do feel a little attacked. And by me, I mean Zebulon, I guess, and Claiborne Montgomery the third, who I play. We both use he him. Um and you know, somehow last week the the worst thing that happened to Charles was not being absolutely beat <laughs> like <laughs> to within an inch of his life. Not the worst thing that happened yeah. to him. Um but Zeb's glad that we did save Charles. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good. That's great. That all sounds really good. Today's episode is called The Gifts of Old Boondari. Implying that there's going to be like a present passing around. Um, the gift I give to you is to clarify. <laughs> now I'm trying to kill you. I'm just joking. I've, I, I've been trying pretty hard some days it doesn't always work out but that makes me happy because i'm your biggest fans and i'm trying to kill you so if you're joining us for the first time or the first time in a long time this motley crew is trying to stop an apocalyptic event from occurring their journey started when their good friend jackson elias was murdered for investigating the infamous carlisle expedition the members of which were all formerly presumed dead uh, since then, they've uncovered a global conspiracy involving various death cults who all worship different aspects of the same eldritch god. Many names, many forms, but all the same and to one end. This has taken them from Peru to New York to England, Shanghai, Australia, Egypt, and finally to Kenya. The cults were working together to... Uh, uh, build a machine to rupture and taint the sky, but our heroes stop that part of the plan. However, the cults in Africa are still thriving and preparing for the great ritual on January 14th, 1926, 107 days from Wednesday, September 30th, 1925, which is 17 days before the new moon and the prophesied birth of the spawn of Nyarlathotep. Last time... Charlie was trapped in his own personal hell, forced to play out the night Annie died over and over again, while the rest of you tried to figure out how to free him. After you subdued Charlie's body with Morphia and Ganymede studied her mythos tome, you were able to find a spell to cast out the crawling chaos. But it required time and more magical energy than she alone could muster. 
with Zeb, Irene, and Natalie Smythe Forbes all contributing, you were able to free Charlie, who now has to deal with the consequences of what his possessed body wrought on his loved ones. So you have approximately 48 hours before you leave for Old Bundari's. Over the course of these two days, you heal a bit. Uh, I do want a first aid check from Ganymede to uh, if if she is going to actually set uh, Charlie's very broken wrist. Of course, of course I will. Nice, nice. So you're gonna get an extra roll a d4, and Charlie's gonna get a few extra HP from that. Nice. Isn't that nice? Um, Charlie, over the course of these 48 hours, you slowly remember what Nyarlath did with your body and how it affected your friends. I mean, you can see uh, something you witnessed in that kind of hell prison Um Zeb, Zeb's face and chest are cut. Um, the way Ganymede looks at you isn't the same as it was a day ago. Um, and Irene's mouth, it's like been covered over like this like new growth of skin. Uh, yeah, and you and you remember, you remember how it I think you can remember how it felt um the power that was moving through you and how it felt to do all those things. <sighs> Natalie puts out word to her contacts, re Hypatia Masters, and where is she? Is she around? Um, and Annabelle and John send a word to the Daring to do the same, to be on the lookout in uh, the port of Mombasa. Is there anything you would like to do before we get to Friday? Including just like talking. Does anybody, somebody could try to figure out uh, the mouth, the no mouth situation. Yeah. <clears throat> I think we do probably have a conversation about the mouth thing. Mm. <laughs> I think we, we do need to address the, the elephant in the room. Sure. Sure. Um, uh, so question, because mm -hmm. I will continue to be that bitch. Um, so let me go look about this because mm -hmm. if you're telling me that I'm remembering things, mm -hmm. the way that you can undo the spell is you have to have knowledge of the spell in the first place. So if mm. I'm like low key, like remembering Ooh, things, spicy, could I potentially remember how to undo it? Um, give me, give me. A power check. It needs to be okay. hard. Okay, I will use a reroll. Manifesting critical success is going to be a one. I can't wait. Manifesting. Here it goes. One. Let's see it right here. A hard <gasps> success. Uh, you got it. Oh okay. Yes. Fantastic. What? What a great question, man. I really wanted y'all to have to do surgery. I didn't um, want to have to do surgery. <laughs> dang it. Um, if y'all would have been into that, otherwise, whatever. Um, Charlie, yes, because you are remembering, uh, mm. the process of it. Um, yeah. you know of the spell, uh, mm. command of the bloody tongue, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. And that's exactly what it's called. Oh, perfect. Mm. Uh, so you believe you could reverse engineer it if you only had the magic points. 
However, I do have the health points. Yes, you do. Yes, yeah. you do. How many? Do you, do you have health points? Right? I do. I have seven whole health points. Do you have the health uh, how many magic points does it cost? Four. You can use your hit points. Um, tell, t describe it. Set the scene. How does this come about? Is everybody there? Is it private? It's probably been like at least 24 hours, I would cool. say. I kind of imagine this in the middle. Charlie's not doing a lot of chit-chatting at the beginning. Surprise, surprise. Um, <laughs> uh, and I think that it's... Uh, he... Has probably been... As he's kind of coming to terms with what happened and is slowly like getting these memories and i imagine he's doing a lot of sleeping especially in those first 24 hours where he's just physically exhausted you know like annie has set his wrist he's like fuck to shit um and he's drained like literally so drained i think it's only happened maybe one or two times that charlie has had zero magic points um in the course of this entire campaign um and uh yeah so i think it's just like as he is remember like remembering and i think it's like it's been looking really cloudy right lately Allie, yes yes the rain rain is is on the on way the horizon mm -hmm. yeah so i think that he's probably just sitting um in like a chair like at one of the tables in like one of the sitting rooms and is kind of just looking outside and he's kind of just remembering that feeling. And it's scary because the way that he associates that power, like his memory of those things was like, he felt really good doing it, right? Mm -hmm. um, like the, the entity in his brain using his body was happy, like gleeful to be doing these things to these people. And so there's a lot of like confused emotion with that because he's like horrified at what happened to Irene, but he's still, there's like that inkling of like, oh, that was really fun. Like in the back mm -hmm. of his mind. Yeah. That's like the, the emotion that's like associated with that. Um, but he is remembering <clears throat> that spell as though he had like learned it himself. Like he's like picking up on the the pieces right um of of what that what what that actually was um and i imagine that irene would probably be not far away right um i think irene constantly is in the same space as charlie like she'll make she'll give him like a bit of room but she's always kind of on the peripheral um yeah, and I think he just kind of turns his gaze like from looking outside to over to her. Um and he he says I don't I don't I don't know if this will work, but I I think that there's something I could try to help. And he kind of reaches out and like touches her cheek. If you trust me to try. And she'll just nod and, and touch her, her hand to yours. Um, yeah, I think he doesn't, he's like not fully confident in his and his abilities um, being as exhaust exhausted as he is. So I think that he does uh, close his eyes and kind of like weirdly has to put himself back in that moment. Yeah, this is also, have you actually cast magic before outside of learning with um, Mushien? That's a great question. I don't think you've ever cast. I don't think I have either. Not that I can remember. Yeah. So this is the first time Charlie's using magic in this way. Yeah. yeah. He remembers what it feels like, right? Yeah. It's like really weird because it's like he's never done it before, but his body has been like a conduit for that. Um, 
I think it feels really similar to lead to like to getting possessed because you have to like let this thing in, like this magic, mm -hmm. like kind of like flow through you, right? And you um, like, freshly kind of remembering what Ganymede confided in Charlie about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, he'll. I think like he kind of is like willing that skin, like willing that like blockage to be pulled back, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so as you do it, the the result, a good couple of minutes later, as the two of you are just there, it's kind of like, you know, when kind of kind of gross, but like, you know, like when you get on the bottom of your foot and like it, like after you've taken a shower or something and that skin just kind of easily, painlessly peels yeah. away um that's what happens like you can see it it kind of um like it was the same tone as her skin tone and it kind of lightens and becomes like more more like translucent and you see like you can just reach forward and kind of mm -hmm. slough it off that was my sanity that i lost doing that excellent Um, yeah, he is exhausted after doing that, um, but it works, and he just kind of smiles a little bit at Irene as it starts, like he can feel it working. Mm -hmm. Irene has a mouth again. regular normal sentences to say mm -hmm. <laughs> only in this game <laughs> I would just like to remind the chat that somehow Charles Raff is still alive despite Lauren's best efforts despite Charles's <laughs> best efforts <laughs> himself through a certain amount of us saving him and sheer dumb luck <laughs> Sheer dumb luck. I'm doing great. I have three hit points. Three whole hit points. Um, crazy. What about what about uh, Ganymede and Zeb uh, over these forty-eight hours? I think Zeb hours. probably checks up with Ganymede for sure. Yeah. Ganymede, Ganymede went to some dark places there. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and Ganymede has been uh, has been. Uh, a bit quieter than normal, but uh, but not not withdrawn in the way that she had been. Uh, I think um, her mind has shifted to uh, to what is to come, and 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 that's been helpful as she's been coping with the last forty eight hours. <clears throat> I think, you know, after you've had some time with um, John and Anna, um, maybe Zeb catches you while they're doing something. Like, maybe come over and knock on the door of your room. Yeah. Come. Uh, Zeb will open the door. Is it a... Uh, uh, Got a moment? Yes, of course. She puts a, closes a, a book, uh, not one of those books, but um, uh, 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 kind of turns the chair from uh, her desk and to, to face out towards you and, and says, have a seat. Gladly. And Zeb will sort of walk over and take a seat and, you know, pretty, he's about as relaxed as he can be. <laughs> uh, he says, well, you know, I feel like, I feel like I'm doing this a lot lately for everyone. And just, it's just a lot, but like, how are you doing? Yeah. 
You are doing it a lot. You always have, though. Yeah, but I mean, that was like maybe like once a week. This is like every day. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder where that came from. Perhaps all those sisters. Being how you're doing. Well, just the the that urge to be to connect with uh, with everyone to help ensure I that mean, everyone is settled and and well. And, I mean, I guess you could say it's sisters, but I mean, have you met the people of Charleston in, in general? Like, everyone wants to know how everyone else is doing. It's true. That is true. Well, I'm doing well, I think, as, as well as can be at this late stage of events. I, it's hard to look at Charles the same way, isn't it? A little bit. I mean, I'm not gonna lie and say that, you know, for all the strangeness and stunts that he's pulled in the past, this one hit a little bit closer to, uh, closer to home um, but I mean I think that was part of his plan now I laugh at him it it saddens me I, I miss Charles Do you recall when, back before all of this started, after our, our journey together in Patagonia, when you were covering the work of the daring, do you recall what it was like to be back home after just being a part of that small and adventurous world for, for months? Yeah. How it, it feels. Nice. Always felt good to... Always felt feels good to go back home. But... But didn't it feel lonely somehow as well? As, as if... There was no one who could really understand what you'd seen and what you'd experienced. I mean, yeah. I mean, how was I going to explain what happened in Peru to anyone other than Mr. Jackson or you or Charles or Irene? She smiles and is quiet for a moment, but then she says, it has, um, it's, it has felt that way for me. I, 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 and I don't mean to, to to criticize in any way. You've you've been a wonderful friend and support, and having Anna John here has has been a a, a lifesaver for me. But but none of you have seen what I've seen, experienced what I've experienced. Charles had, though. In fact, the thing that possessed him used that against me. And I, I think that I... I think that I've never felt quite so alone. think that you know I think that 
Nah, I laugh the tap. For all, however powerful he may be, however weird and unimaginable he may be, I think that, well, he's all alone. And because his followers, his fanatics, that's, they're just bootlickers and power trip fanatics. And I think that he wants you to feel that way. I think that he doesn't want you to have what he can't have. And, you know, it's understandable. It's, I definitely haven't seen what you've seen, what Charles has seen. Heck, I think Irene's probably seen some stuff that I can't imagine. Obviously, I've seen a lot of stuff that most of the world can't imagine at this point, but we're talking a difference of scales here. But you're not alone. Got Anna and John. Well, while they may not fully understand what we've gone through, they're there and they've tried. We got Irene and Charles who can understand what you've gone through. And, well, you've got me. But don't let Nihilath Tap come between us. Funny you should say that. Zebulon, I, I need your help. Anything? When Charles was possessed, when I was alone with him, he... Well, I... I confessed certain things to him and... And, and I'm afraid that in doing so, I've put John and your sister in terrible danger. And besides that, I'm, I'm realizing that though they are the source of my strength, they're also potentially a grave weakness to me and to all of us. If he should threaten them in some way, well, I'd prefer to, to, to deny him that, uh, that power against us, against me. I, I need you to help me to convince them to leave. I think Zeb sort of starts at that. <laughs> well, I mean, I can't say I like them near this any more than you do. Um, and I mean, I can try. I don't know how much good it's going to do. I don't know if you've met my sister, but well, I don't remember being able to convince her of doing anything other than what she set her mind to. And it is one of her most beautiful traits. And I think John's going to pretty much go wherever you two, where, where y'all are going. We, we have to try, though. We can try, but, I mean, they may not fully know everything that 
we've been through, but you know, they're they're choosing to be here, and they know the dangers. And they can take care of themselves to a degree. I mean, John is John, and well, Annabelle is Annabelle in a Montgomery. Pretty good at taking care of ourselves. Um, she stands up and walks over to you, and she is as as earnest and sincere as you've ever seen her when she says, Zeb, I need you to promise me that you will try with me. I know, I, I know it's unlikely, but, but I, I can't go into this with them. I have to know that they're safe. Promise. I'll try. That's all I can promise. But if they make up their minds and they're going to be there, then... I'm going to support that at the end of the day. Because we need, we need allies. We need friends. We need help. We can't do this alone, Kanami. She uh, she, I think she just reaches up and sort of cups your cheek if you let her and she's uh, the look in her eyes is um is i don't know there's a little bit of desperation there but uh, she turns back to the desk and uh and folds up so she's got papers that she's been writing on folds those up puts them in an envelope uh and seals them and says well come on no time like the present One thing, Ganymede, I just want you to know, I think, I think he's afraid of us. Ganymede turns back to you at the, she's in the doorway and she turns back and, and her, her old, the old Ganymede smile is back. And she says, I know he is, and he's right to be. Shall we? Yeah. You find Annabelle making John repack his suitcase because it is not up to snuff. <laughs> Zeb, Showing Zeb him gives folding John, techniques. That gives John a note, like a like an understanding look, just like why well, it's not me. <laughs> Hello, my darlings. I, I wonder if uh, Zebulon and I might have a brief word. She's closed the door. Mm -hmm. um, and she sits, kind of hoping that everyone else will. So and stand she, by the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you're truly really a quick escape. Is that what you're looking for? <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, she says, um, I need for you to leave Kenya before the rest of us go to the mountain. I don't want you to leave. I never want you to leave. But, but please hear me when I say that I need you to leave. I need you to be as far away from this as possible. I need to know that if what happened to Charles happens to me, that you will not be at risk. I, 
I love you both more than I have words to say, but but I'm I am begging you. There are so many other ways that you can contribute. There are things that need to be done, observations that need to be made aboard the daring. I, I, we, we need to find Hypatia and perhaps Ava, any of these things, but You expect um, quiet protestation and uh, from one partner and uh, heated uh, refusal from the other. You get neither. Uh, they exchange a look and Anna says... Okay. That was worry, worryingly easy, I think, from Ganymede's perspective. Yeah, because I was like, wait, really? And I, Ganymede, I think, is, is, you know, kind of off of the chair and, and down on her knees between the two of them. And she's looking up at Anna and says, um, you, you know, that this is this is this is for your protection and and for my own uh, uh, she's trying not to laugh i think this this might be one thing that actually frustrates Ganymede me <laughs> yeah. just a little bit as yeah. as the proper <clears throat> english woman and and so she what what is it Oh, no, should I, um, John, no, we, we're definitely coming with you. You can't stop us. Am I, is, would that be, do you want me to do that? <laughs> I'm snorting in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I think she kisses her hand and she kisses John's hand and, uh, and then she straightens up and kind of gets gets herself under control a bit. Um, she says, um, you've been discussing this, haven't you? Charles was, you made Charles float. And he made Irene have no mouth. Um, we are very clearly out of our league. And John. We can still be helpful. We have some ideas. Yes, yes, you certainly can be. And um, I have Well, a few... when you say it, it sounds patronizing. When we say it, it, it sounds legitimate. She looks up at Annabelle, she says, uh, do you not think that I am wise enough, even at this point, to never patronize Annabelle Claiborne Montgomery? And John says, it's just the accent, and... <laughs> Good, good. And she stands up and she kind of brushes off her knees and, um, well then, I, um, let me, let me give you a hand with that, um, the suitcase mm -hmm. and, um, uh, yeah, as, as you're helping, uh, John kind of, uh, like cradles your wrist in his hand this thing is in 15 days? Yes.
if we don't hear from you by then. We are going after you. And she, she, um, their eyes connect and she says, oh, please do. She takes him in her arms and pulls Anna in and, uh, Yeah, Anna was going to worm her way in anyway. Yeah, yeah. And as, <laughs> as she's going to help, she's going to help them pack. And as she uh -huh. does, she's going to she's going to tuck that letter into into John's bag mm -hmm. underneath whatever's whatever's resting on top she'll put it in underneath great okay Friday Jackson's directions uh, stated Outside the Kikuyu Central Association storefront at sunsets on Fridays, a very tall man in all white but no shoes waits. You must follow him at a distance. He will make sure you are not left behind. If he stops and waits, then you also must stop and wait. The door he enters will have yellow paint. That door you will enter also, swiftly and without hesitation. Friday, October 2nd, 1925. 15 days before the birth. You follow these directions to Swahili Town. Uh, you f find the the man outside the KCA. It, he's not trying to hide, but if you didn't know to look for him, nothing, he wouldn't really stand out except that he seems to be waiting. But even that isn't that strange. And you can follow him through Swahili Town. Uh, has, the, has the rain hit at this point? Yes, yes, very, yeah. very much so. Yeah. Like Zeb has a moment where he's like, what's the chance that there's another person who's wearing all white with no shoes? In this, in this town <laughs> right in front of right in front of this one building as we stand there and and watch for a moment um you all see Ganymede uh bow her head and and she begins to chant a little bit under her breath okay i listening listening yeah yeah you don't you don't recognize it is not it's not the language of the necronomicon hmm. do, do you want to tell us what, what it what is? language is it because maybe i know it oh it's a it's a an african swahili dialect uh -huh. it's just kind of the same thing over and over zeb's on the lookout yeah, make a, um, give me a spot hidden and give me psychology. Can I do those too? Sure. Wow. Wow. Zeb loses track of, of the man you're following. <laughs> Zeb sees another man. <laughs> <laughs> you do. You find the only other man dressed exactly the same. And you start right, to follow him, but fortunately. Do I, I, I got a success. That psychology check? Yeah. Uh, Okay. I got this. I got a success in this. Wait, did you still want that psychology check? Uh, no. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta <laughs> crit fail. You're busy. Um, so yeah, Irene manages to course correct you before you go too far off with her hard. And the psychology check, Charles. Mm -hmm. Uh, this, this man. You see that he is mindful of of your surroundings, like. And he's never getting too close to you. You never look like you're together. Um, but he is as um, aware as any of you at your like most vigilant. Mm -hmm. um, he is making. He is attempting to ensure that uh, you don't look like you're together to anybody watching and. Also to make sure nobody's watching. Yeah. Um, so 
So the part of Nairobi you move through is uh, poorer than where you were staying. A lot of the houses are one room. Uh, there are some mud wall buildings roofed by bundled grasses and broad leaves occasionally. There is like the home of an entrepreneur that makes a striking contrast. Um, prosperity here is judged by how well one's roof sheds water. There are roofs made of shingles tile or amalgams of packing crates and hammer out metal sheets. Um, that strike you as, as nicer um, or higher status, perhaps. Um, but eventually, your guide stops before a yellow painted door, turns and looks at all of you, like makes pointed eye contact, and then steps through. Yeah. Annie Meat steps out to follow mm -hmm. without hesitation. Yep. Y'all don't think there's a basement in that building, do you? There usually is. Almost certainly. All right, let's go. All right. You find yourselves not in a basement, in a small shed beside a high wheeled yellow Rolls Royce Roadster of indifferent condition. Uh, your guide does not speak to you, holds open the door, and motions for you to get in the car. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Climb right in. All aboard. Let's go. Got right? a basement that prefers this. Yeah, it's great. Um, <laughs> in a few minutes, you are bouncing along a dirt track. Um a dirt road several miles outside of Nairobi. Uh, you're heading to the north, uh, almost almost directly, kind of skirting the Aberdare Forest. Uh, there are bicycles, animal-drawn carts as you go, and you leave a long cloud of dust in your wake. You... Drive for about an hour. He never speaks to you. Um, the car interior is hot and stuffy. Um, and you eventually come to a remote village. Uh, and you stop. Let's see. Do I have you on this page? Let's go over to the map just to show you about where you are. Um, oh, I have, we, I got a personal commission for Allie from Avery and you're going to see it cause I put it up over here. Um, it's animated. It's Ganymede casting spells. It looks so freaking cool. I love it. I love it so much. I love it so, so cool. much. Anyway, so you can all see it. It's beautiful. All right. Let me get the map up. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, here we are. Here we are. Let me put us in the right spot. Zoom, 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 zoom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have headed north. Let's see. We are here now. So you can all see. In Nadovu Village. Uh, so the car stops uh, just beyond a circle of huts. Uh, your guide gets out but motions for you to remain in the vehicle. Uh, yeah. Um, as he gets out, uh, appearing from one of the huts um, is a young kind of almost delicate looking uh, man uh, <clears throat> and he and the guide uh, begin talking that he he has very delicate features but his face is kind of um, you know his brows furrowed his jaws clenched um, yeah and they, they begin conversing while you wait in the car there are um, 
some psychology check. Yeah, sure. I feel like my warning has worked. <laughs> Me too. Manifesting yeah. critical success. That's what I forgot to do last time. Yeah, you forgot to you forgot to manifest. Oh my god, what? Wait, Are you bugged? On. No. No. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> unlocking. God shit. Tommy rolled two hundred. That's so unlucky. Yeah. Can I have used a reroll and get that If you would like nine? to, yeah, I'll let you. I'll let you. I want to use a reroll. Oh, and Alexis gives everybody a reroll. Thank you, Alexis. Yay. I'll update it. Thank you. Okay, so a hard success. At first, uh, Zeb, you get distracted. You think you see another man in all white <laughs> with no <laughs> shoes on, like moving, it's and just, you're like, wait. It's just. It's, we pick the one day where like everyone it's like it's like it's oh, hot. Is it? It, it, it's the day before Labor Day, so everyone needs to, <laughs> everyone needs to wear their whites. Um, um. So, uh, but watching this conversation, even though you can't understand the language, you would have needed a heart anyway, which is great. Um, um, this conversation has happened before. It's kind of like a, just the routine of how it is. The delicate looking man, uh, uh, the delicate looking man just seems wary, like extremely wary. Um, very suspicious. Uh, not of the guide of of you all. Um, as the conversation plays out, there are some children uh, from the village who kind of gather around the car and are like checking it out and like uh, waving in it, all of you. Um, none of them are speaking English, but they're kind of giggling and, and whispering. Um, is there uh, is there yeah. windows uh like ro rollable windows? Yeah, this? yeah. I think Zeb rolls down the windows. Like, you know, we may have we, we haven't mentioned that they run like, away. And the kids. Well, yeah, when you start talking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, he's like, oh well, okay, that's awkward. Um, and he's still kind of looking over at the other two. You know, we haven't mentioned yet. We probably should have, but we're here because of a Mr. Jackson Elias. If that means anything. We really probably should have said that at some point. Your guide and uh, this this other man kind of both shoot a look over at you like, don't interrupt us. I feel like we, I just want, I feel like we should have said that at With some With your point. psychology check, the name doesn't <laughs> seem to mean anything. Um, okay. okay. But the Thanks guide finally you. like gestures for you to get out of the car. I, yeah, <laughs> Char Charlie will give Zeb a look that's like you could have just waited literally ten seconds. <laughs> I mean, we probably should have mentioned that when we got in the car, just in case they needed. Like, otherwise, they didn't know where we were coming from. We could have just been some random folks following. I them. mean, it doesn't seem to have mattered if we were just random well, folks. We, we, I mean, we didn't know that until I said something. Yeah, that's what I thought, Charles. <laughs> Yeah, Charlie's <laughs> just like I'm not gonna argue with this guy. Yeah, um, get out of the car. Yeah, you like practically eviscerated him. Probably best not to. Okay, so uh, you exit the vehicle. I have a little map. I have a little map. Don't look there. Look down here. Do do do. Uh, so the guide, um, as you approach, kind of, uh, walks away as some of the children run back up and they have, uh, uh, some water in a cup for him. Um, but the, the delicate featured man, uh, introduces himself in English I am Okomu. Why do you wish to speak to old Bundari? Uh, 
Um, 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 um. Did the note? What do we have it as a handout, right? The note. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm pulling it. Um. Yeah. Um. As a summary, Jackson never came here, but he was right. Uh, but a man named Johnstone Kenyatta. Wreck like kind of gave him this place as, as um, a reference of somebody who kind of knew the type of things that Jackson was asking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, old Bundari uh, was kind of described to him as yeah. uh, one of the most powerful and respected tribal magicians of East Africa. Do we have a portrait for this guy? For Okomo? Uh huh. I, sir, surely, surely I. Yes. Surely you do. Surely. Let me make sure of something. Hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's the right one. I was like, uh, I wasn't sure if I mixed anything up, but I didn't. Because he's very pretty. Mm. He's just waiting for you to answer. Yeah. Yeah. Ganymede steps forward and and says, um, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Ganymede. And my friends and I were, uh, were recommended to come to speak with old Bundari. I, I think because we have, um, well, we have a, a, a journey ahead of us into darkness and, and, and I think our friend thought that, that he might have some assistance to offer us. We're following, um, We're looking into, uh, I guess you could say, the the wave of people who have come into Kenya, who seem to be drawn toward the mountain. I can't say that we're headed in that direction for the same reasons, but we are trying to get there. We have a general idea of where we're going but it would be nice to have some assistance and any clarification on what the ki the situation is currently like the more information we have going into this whole thing the better he he nods uh, and as as you are out this far, uh, there are two nearby mountains. There's, of course, Mount Kenya, kind of to your, the east, um, but kind of northwest is where you all feel the draw. Um, but Okomu nods and gestures for you to follow him to one of these huts, um, from the outside, uh, Bundari's home has the smooth curves of a Maasai hut, although it is a lar larger and constructed uh, slightly different uh, than the other kind of mud dwellings in the village. There's a gated fence around it. The door is a simple curtain. As you go in, the house is formed almost like a snail's shell. The entrance passage winds all the way around the outside of a single central room before opening into it. Uh, the way is unlit, but with the light that comes in from your entrances, you can all see uh, fetishes, uh, 
signs, masks, and so forth arranged on both the inner and outer whitewashed walls of the passage. Uh, as you move into the central room, there are more signs and symbols carefully arranged into patterns. Um, if you want, you can make an occult or Cthulhu mythos check. Hell yeah, I'd love to. As they walk, Ganymede is <clears throat> sliding a bit into professor mode. Mm -hmm. this, um, this metaphor round and round and ever deeper is a fairly common one in religions around the world, symbolic of, uh, of finding the, the inner self, the true nature of things, and then we emerge into the... Yeah. And I got a hard success on that culture. Great, we got successes. Excellent. Uh, Ganymede, both you and Charles see this, but um, you having been in the library in Cairo, um, and both of you from having been in Mr. Lung's shop in Shanghai, um, you see warding symbols worked into the roof and the dirt floor. Mm -hmm. And across from the interior door is a small old man sitting so still that he seems to be dead. As you enter, Akomu goes to the man, unfolds one of his legs, and rubs it, um, like restoring the circulation, and then folds it back into its original position. Okomu says, This is Bundari. He is powerful in his magic. He has worked to strengthen himself um, and has thus become more conjoined with the other sides, as he calls them. His presence is now somewhat in flux between this world and many others. It is my job to guard this reality for Bundari and to protect his shell. He has other assistants who perform these functions at the loci of his presences on the other sides. You sit. You must wait for his attention to focus on this reality. It may take hours. But if you wish to speak with him, you must sit beside his shell, or he may not be drawn out of his meditative state for days. I... I will bring you something to eat while you wait. Uh, do not converse. That can too rapidly draw him out from his voyage. Yeah, Charlie will nod and go to sit mm -hmm. by old Bundari. Yeah. Ganymede yeah, as well, sit cross-legged on the floor. Uh, I, have a, I have a question. Yeah. The warding symbols, based on my own knowledge or perhaps that hard success, do I believe that if Charlie was still possessed that he would be able to pass those symbols. Mm. I'm looking for evidence here that he's not so that I can right. fully trust him. Um, it would depend. You know, warding symbols can be overcome by an entity's will, um, but they would have to overcome it yeah. there would be some yeah. kind of effort displayed yeah but i didn't observe any of that no okay, okay. thank you yeah. so so you all sit and wait this will be zeb's greatest challenge yet <laughs> yep oh uh, there's lots around 
the room. Like, there's, like, you know, everything kind of arranged in this way. Um, so there are things to kind of look at, um, though you may not understand exactly what they are. Um, but Okomu leaves. Um, let's see how long this is going to take. Nine hours. Not a joke. My God. And no talking. Right. Let's role play it. Let's sit here for <laughs> nine hours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Be in your pants, Seb. Okomu uh, does come in about mm, an hour later uh, with unshelled peanuts baked plantain and milk. Uh, so you are fed as this goes on longer and longer. Um, I imagine that like one of the only sounds is Charlie shuffling his tarot deck. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, if you wanted to, well, <laughs> you probably don't want to keel over to do it. So maybe I'm not, not. going to use any magic yeah. right now, Lauren. <laughs> um, it's my nervous tick. It's my that and smoking. But I'm not going to smoke in here with this guy meditating. Yeah, probably not. Probably a bad idea. idea. Uh, yeah, you do hear really something awesome. kind of like scratching. Mm hmm. Little scratching? Yeah, big little, scratching. little scratching. Like mice? Kind of. Yeah. Do um, we also hear that? Yeah, yeah. You uh, And you can tell where it's coming from. There's like a... a uh, a sheet kind of over what looks like the outline of like a small cage. You can hear it just a little moving around from in there. I can't touch anything. So the... Fall you fall asleep. asleep. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Ganymede probably does too, eventually. Nice. I, I shall I... stay vigilant. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Irene has her, her sketchbook out and she's been um, drawing the different objects around the room whatever catches her eyes i think she even does like a quick sketch portrait of um of the man in front of us meditating sure i will show you what he looks like let's go over to the hey. map everybody i want to see a guy it's a guy yeah. Ooh. yeah the vibes the vibes So, um, yeah, he does, he, he is kind of frail physically, um, shirtless, uh, he bears many piercings and ornamentations of rings and feathers, um, and as he, as he does eventually, uh, emerge from this state, uh, his, you see his body kind of like stiffen and swell uh, and now there is like this intangible liveliness to the figure that was not there before his eyes open and about this time Okomu walks back in um, Bundari looks at each of you and smiles he is very kind of Far away, but uh, warm eyes uh, with lots of smile lines. Uh, he begins to speak, uh, but you can't understand him. Okomu uh, translates. Uh, Bundari looks at you and seems to address you first, Irene. Uh, Akomu translates. 
he stands with them to protect her. Bundari turns to Zeb. There's still hope to... And he looks confused for a moment. Ah, um, her transformation can be subdued, but in getting the answer, you may lose something. Um, Bundari turns to Ganymede. And Okomu translates, there's still hope to bring them home, but it will always come at a cost. And finally to Charles, briefer than the others, Okomu translates, he says, he is so sorry. Bundari takes a big inhale of breath as he kind of stretches and you hear a bunch of, you know, joints kind of cracking. Okomu translates, of course. Your mission is perilous and the time is desperate. Shall I tell you pleasant things or the truth? The bloody tongue grows arrogant. People across the land disappear into the mountain stolen by the cult for the blood sacrifice to come. Leaders are brought low by corrupt thoughts and deeds. Many of us must pray continuously to Guy, the lord of Mount Kenya, to stave off this evil. What can I tell you? What do you wish to know? How can I help? We would like to prevent it. Any insight you can give us into how we might do that swiftly? Bundari nods and, and begins to go on, Okomu translating as fast as he can. Ancient tales speak of a great sign, the eye of light and darkness, which could forever chain the cruel god within the mountain. Bundari says this was this knowledge was given to him by a mystic and scribe named Tassan in one of his seven books. He says he was a good dancer. Yes, yes, we we know of we know of the magic of, of which you speak. I believe that we can cast it. But, but we need to get close enough safely and, and have the time. Akomu translates this back. Um... And his response, yes, and first you must cleanse the evil present. Uh, the mountain of the black wind is so called because of the dread god who inhabits it. Others know the mountain as Mount Satima. Even the greatest of spells cast against the mountain have no effect and once Every year, the black wind is unleashed, bringing plague, famine, disaster. Uh, to satisfy their god, a group, uh, a cult, abducts villagers, sacrifices them. After the sacrifices, the god appears in all its terrible glory, attended by creatures not of this earth. As tall as the mountain itself, the god has no face, only a blood-red tongue hangs down from where the top of its head should be. The mere sight of this hideous god drives men mad. 
The god's priestess is called Moeru. She lives in the mountain. It was she who prophesied the coming of a child of the god, part human monster, who is soon to soak the land with blood. We want to stop the child from being born. Ha, Okomu says this back. Bundari nods. Ha, Okomu translates his words. You have two weeks before the birth, before the manifestation of the bloody tongue and the black wind. The mother, though. Is there a way to... Is there a way to ensure that she lives? Okomu translates this, and there is a long silence as Bundari, you almost think he's going back. He yeah. very much stills and... Komu, as Bundari begins to speak, says, if you, Stopping the birth at this point means cutting it out. It means the hosts, the mothers, physical body is unlikely to be in any state to survive. Uh, there seems to be some... Bunari speaks more. Yeah. But Okomu like looking at him and seems to kind of hold back like doesn't want to say what he just said yeah I think that Charlie's just been looking at Boondari but yeah. like noticing that kind of like withhold like of information will kind of look over at Okomo and just be like please When he said the mother's physical body is unlikely to survive, Ganymede just reaches over Charlie and takes your hand. Yeah, he, he immediately grips your hand so tightly. Yeah. yeah. Okomu says, the... Bundari does not view knowledge as bad, I suppose. I don't know. He, 
he does care. And, uh, when the birth happens, if it were to happen, it's not just... The child can exist in two aspects. It can sometimes take after its father. And other times it can take after its mother. The child isn't merely using the mother's body as a an incubator it is also absorbing her becoming her but what does that what does that mean for her depending on your definition of alive. And Okuma looks, Okomu looks very uncomfortable that Boondari is even like sharing this, but like uh, to Boondari, it's like, yeah, I'm going to tell you all the aspects that you asked about, even though nobody would really like feasibly want that yeah. to happen. Um, if you're telling me that there's no way for her to physically survive and keep her soul intact, then that's what I need to hear. That's not precisely what he said. If, if the birth is prevented and the mother's body dies, her spirit will be free. But in the time when the child takes after its mother, it will be the mother. Charlie just looks at Ganymede. Like, just lost, like doesn't know what to do. has to be a way. Yeah. There has to be a way. And there's there's no guarantee that it will take after the mother. It will sometimes. I, I, I think what I think what he's saying is that it will take both forms. Okomu nods. She can move between them. Many names, many forms, remember? But, but, and she looks back at Okomu, but until until the child is born the it the the, the the father 
the father's power, influence can be separated from the mother, from her soul, certainly, you said, if not her body. There's not in. I turn to Charlie. Then there must be a way to save her physically as well. There must be. We say <laughs> there could be. But at what potential risk to everyone? Because you know, at the end of the day, Ganny, it'll just be me who has to go through that to lose her. I don't want to put everyone at risk. No. No, of course. But we have time, we have time. If we, if we had her, perhaps some solution could be found. You healed Irene, I cast his presence out of your consciousness, out of your body. We have, we have time. Ah. Bundari kind of slowly uh, moves his thin arm to uh, you, Charles, and just kind of like squeezes your shoulder. Uh, he begins speaking. Uh, Okomu translates, if you seekers have courage, you may achieve much, but you must hurry. Uh, Okomu, and he kind of stops, I, <laughs> I can help, can guide you to the mountain, but first, gifts. Um, he says some more to Akomu, who begins moving through the hut. Um, first, he brings back and places in Bundari's hand a curiously carved fly whisk, it looks like. And you're just now noticing, like, in other parts so far, you've, you've had some run-ins uh, with bugs. But since you got into this hut, th there have been, there's nothing um uh, Bundari holds that and uh, then Okomu goes and fetches uh, the covered cage uh, and gives it to old Bundari a picture. You can see 
as the cage is uncovered. Uh, in this small wooden cage is a strange looking reptile, a warty gray brown lizard with three horns sticking forward from its forehead. Uh, two features distinguish it from regular chameleons. Uh, the first is that its mouth is on the vertical axis rather than the horizontal. Um, yeah, yeah, like this, right? Um, like a Venus flytrap. Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. Um, the second is that each of its forelimbs divides into two at the elbow joint so that each forelimb has two feet. Uh, old Bundari talks and Okomu translates. This is my friend who is not what she seems. Okomu furrows uh, his brow, but uh, that is her name. Uh, who is not what she seems. Uh, who for short, he says. I found her in a faraway place. You may call her who, for short. Take her with you and feed her well and daily with flies. You need but open her cage and free her for her to be of service to you. But remember, do not let her out until you reach the mountain of the black wind when you are in need of a friend. And then emphasizes, feed her well and daily with flies. Uh, the fly whisk is, uh, has an ebony handle carved with Kikuyu symbols. Um, in many cultures, the fly whisk is thought of as a defense against evil spirits. Uh, for such spirits often take the form of flies. Uh, usually, magicians like Old Mundari invariably have whisks among their paraphernalia, uh, but this fly whisk is special. Bundari talks, Okomu translates, that this can find and um, store magic. It can find find evil and and store magic. These are our gifts to you. Thank you. Yes, we thank you. most generous with both your gifts and your wisdom. You see old Bundari has kind of started to lose his focus a bit. Um, Okomu has, has food with him and is, is helping him eat uh, because he is just kind of feels like he's half there after this exchange. I look at Komu. How, how may we repay your generosity? His generosity. We must find and free any of the villagers the cult has taken and cleanse the evil and perform the right. Are there any other allies that we could call on to help us? There are an awful lot. Yes, and more move through these parts all the time. 
We are already diminished in number. What about this Lord of Mount Kenya that he mentioned? Uh, the god guy. Is there any way we could request their help? We have entreated, implored many times, but the evil from the mountain of the black wind seems to be too much. Uh, and it's it's very late into the evening now. Like, you got here, like, after sunset, and we're, well, you know, and then you sat for nine hours. So we're maybe sunrise at this point. There's a kind of shout from outside and you recognize somebody saying, Okomu, and he says, please feel free to uh, rest. Uh, we have uh, another hut where you can stay, but I believe old Bundari is on preparing to embark on another of his journeys. Uh, I must, excuse me, and Okomu exits uh following the voice and uh you can hear discussion and walking away getting me well she stands and um and walks back toward the Toward the, the where we entered the room and the spiral that leads out mm -hmm. before she leaves she turns back to old Bundari and says um, if you see them tell them I love them and I'm very happy and she doesn't wait for any, she just goes. Yeah. Zeb just sort of turns them. Thanks for, uh, for everything. I think probably Zeb. Zeb has the, has, <laughs> has a who. I thought you um, might. <laughs> Zeb probably has you. Uh, I'll make sure and take care of her very well. Hopefully, be able to bring her back after all of this, if she wants. Uh, and then we'll give a small bow. And yeah. Follow the end of the out. Charlie and Irene. I don't think Charlie says anything. As he leaves, he just kind of looks at Old Bundari and gives him like a nod. Um. And then, yeah, just heads out. He looks exhausted. Yeah. I think Irene is the last to leave and she'll take a notebook and she'll very carefully tear out the drawing that she did of him mm. and hand it over. Oh, he smiles. <laughs> I'm going to give him a, a little bow before heading out. Mm-hmm. As, as you go, he, uh, holding the drawing, looks at you and just goes like, and yeah, uh, 
Would you like to, you have not slept through the night, so there's no rest gained, but if you would like to rest here, there is space for you. Uh, somebody else will kind of show you where, because a Komu has been called away. Um, I so, feel like yeah. we should rest up before yeah. we head into the terrible mountains of doom. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Just yeah. maybe. Yeah. Great. Just, just possibly yeah. should get some sleep. Yeah. Okay, so everybody will regain two more hit points because this is Pulp Wee. Cthulhu. Um, and Magic yes. points? Yes. Your magic points, for some reason, after being in Old Dundari's presence, do begin to come back. One per hour, as usual. Um, if you're getting the hit points, you're resting for at least eight hours, so eight magic points so far and we'll see how rapidly they come back after that um or rather how long how long uh the rest of the time you spend here is the uh, you have who you must uh feed who and flies don't come anywhere near you so you have to actually go and seek them out which will be very interesting. Somebody can help you. Somebody here in, in the village can help you do that. Um, because the flies nowhere near you. So There's definitely far. a few moments of like Zeb trying to go do it by himself yeah. and failing. <laughs> Just <laughs> like, man, I don't know where that, like, I mean, in Charleston, you didn't have to go very far. You could definitely find a spot where... <laughs> Why is it so hard here? Yeah. Um, it's always when you're looking for flies that you can never find can't any. Find a single damn fly. <laughs> um, and the fly whisk. Uh, this will be useful for either of our two folks who use. Uh, oh, I just realized I had this map on Ava the whole time. There we go. Charlie. Whoops. Um, this overlay, I mean. Uh, the fly whisk basically can store additional magic points for you. So you can put magic points in it up to a limit um, and then regain your points as normal. So you basically have a pool. Um, anyone can, whoever's holding it can put magic points in it and it can be used by anybody holding it. So it's not like attunement or anything like that. Like, but you do have to be holding it to access those magic points. And the finding hidden evil aspect. Uh, it grants a bonus die to the person holding it with any skill so used to find hidden evil. For example, if you were searching like for a hidden entrance uh, to a temple devoted to a mythos deity, it would add a bonus die to your spot hidden roll. So the fly whisk and your new friend who who is probably not what she seems uh that is where we're going to end this episode of masks of nyarlathotep the gifts of old bundari lovely session so happy there is nothing left but the fucking mountain let's go anyway uh let's go around to everybody let's all look at the beautiful gif Again, this animated illustration of Ganymede because it is so sick and I love it very much. Uh, yeah, faces. Let's go around. Let's go around, everybody. How'd you find the session? Where can people find you on the internet? All that jazz. Let's start with Tommy. I mean, as always, great session. Um, nice to have a little bit of a chill period after the last two sessions. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> which are very tense. <laughs> um, and nice, nice to find someone that doesn't have it out for us again. Um, yeah, a great session. Cannot wait uh, for next week. Um, and and to maybe finally the beginning of the end, <laughs> one way or the other. Um, and hopefully, be able to go back home soon. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Totally. 100%. Yeah. We're all going to go home safe and sound. Everybody lives. Well, everyone lives. We'll be fine. Fine. I'm Tommy, editor of Penguin Trisphere. Um, I do tabletop RPG stuff and some video editing stuff. 
Um, if you're interested in commissioning work, find the posty on my Twitter feed. Um, and I'll let you every, uh, know everything you need to know. Excellent, excellent. Summer! Ah! I love Old Bundari and I love who? Um, our sweet little lizard, our weird lizard. Yeah, she is not just a lizard. Um, and I can't wait to see what she really is. Uh, so that'll be really exciting as soon as we get to the mountain. We're gonna be like, okay, bitch, get out your cage. We're going crazy. I can't wait. Um, it's gonna be fun. Um, yeah, great episode. Um, I'm Summer. You can find me on Twitter at Just a Summer Job. You can find me on Twitch at It's Just a Summer Job. Did you, you like how I did that? So you nailed it. Um, and yeah, I'll be streaming for a little bit today. Um, and I usually stream most days of the week, so go check me out. I'm here every Saturday for a limited time for, only. There's no way we have more than we've got like five episodes left. Maybe yeah. maybe. Six to end on a hundred. Yeah, we really want to end on a hundred, so we might just hang out if we don't make it. Yeah, we could do, we could do a post, a post. Round yes, if yes. We don't, if we don't. yeah, yes. Yeah, super, super excited. So, um, I'm here for a limited time only. Get it while you can. That's right. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's head up to Allison. So amazing. I, I, I'm with you, Tommy. We needed, we needed a moment before the plunge and we got it and it was amazing. I loved everything about it. My only disappointment, I'm gonna be very honest with you, was that nobody asked Ganymede what she was doing when she was chanting Yet. there. Yeah, Yet. Nobody, nobody's asked. Well, I, I mean, it definitely, was- definitely, I asked you what language you were speaking implying that you were gonna tell us what you were I saying. I know, I was waiting, I was just waiting. I mean, what she were was you just saying? a, it was a, it was a, it was a, a, a traditional, rain blessing she was just oh, nice. blessing the blessing the rains we, down in africa all right come to you're, done. Yes. you're done you're done you're done all next week you, <laughs> you you're done uh kiana please my saving us from terrible puns yes yeah, yeah. okay hi everyone i'm i'm kiana uh that was an episode and a half but i'm excited that we're gonna get gonna get into it we're gonna get into the the final bit of action um you can find me over on twitter at kenna ash best way to figure out what i'm doing when i'm not here on the channel mostly just here though uh you can go check out archon um our cyberpunk ttrpg book which is now an igdn Yay. groundbreaker award winner so go check that out um and there's print copies there are print copies out there now and they look so cool so you can also get those um but yeah, that, that's mostly me. How are you, Lauren? Hey, everyone. I'm Lauren. I'm the salty half of this channel. I've been running this game for two and a half years. Almost. Almost. Um, I think it's quite possible our last episode will fall on October 1st, which is exciting. Um, kicking off spoopy season. Yeah, there's... It is only the mountain now. Can you imagine if y'all had gone to Kenya and gotten who and this fly whisk early? No, you would have, it's okay. You would have died. The mountain would have killed you. It may still kill you. Who knows what will happen? Who knows? Who knows? Who? Okay. So we're gonna be back next week. Have a rollicking good time. The beginning of the end and all that. Thank you to our sponsors. Roll 20, Dice Having Grinding Coffee Code. Thank you to everybody who <laughs> tipped and chatted today, hung out. Thank you so much. Uh, you can catch us on YouTube if you ever miss an episode. They all get posted there the Wednesday after. And yeah, that's what you need to know and you just need to be here because we're going we're going we're almost there we are almost there at actually 100 percent in this campaign uh so we'll see you next week wave bye everybody goodbye goodbye